If the ocean dried up tomorrow, or let's say the Gulf of Mexico, if it dried up tomorrow, what difference would it make? Everything we care about, our economy, our security, certainly our health, but fundamentally, life itself depends on taking care of the world's waters. And we can start in our backyard, the Gulf of Mexico. My whole being is based around the time on the water down here. They're some of the last wild places. I mean, they belong to all of us. What we're trying to do is figure out how people are going to be able to fish these sensitive and highly pressured areas into the future. If you go out down island, if you go out on the laguna, it's our wilderness. However you come at this body of water, people have a connection to it. Whether you know it or not, the Gulf of Mexico is important to you. And if we want to sustain its future, we want to see a future that's healthy, both economic and ecologically, we have, we've got a lot of work to do. The Gulf is one of the most dynamic bodies of water that we have in this country. And the truth of the matter is, it's compromised. And it's been compromised for a while because of all of the functions it's trying to perform. Our job at the Nature Conservancy is to restore the health of the Gulf of Mexico so that it can be that dynamic body of water where people go on vacation, they fish, um, they enjoy the fruits of this environment. The Gulf of Mexico is, is one of the world's great natural banks. Uh, and, and the capital on which that bank is, is built is habitat. And those are wetlands and oyster reefs, seagrass meadows, mangroves, coral reefs, all of those types of things that produce the, the bounty that we come to expect from the Gulf of Mexico. The problem is that we've been eating away at that capital for so long that I don't know if the Gulf is sustainable anymore. And one way we can address that is through restoration projects. The way the Gulf is set up naturally is a series of interlocking systems that work together in order to clean the water. It's a basic filtering system. What we found is that most of those systems have been compromised. So what we look at is how we can make sure that those systems are intact and healthy and filtering the Gulf's waters. What some of our restoration projects are attempting to do is to go back into these historical areas where we've lost oyster reefs and rebuild those beds, provide that opportunity for young oysters to colonize. We've been able to pilot some smaller scale projects that teach us exactly how to do large scale restoration. What I'd love to be able to do over the course of the next 15 to 20 years is to have long term sustained investment in the Gulf so that we can do large scale restoration projects that really have a meaningful impact on things like the fisheries and the oysters and the shrimp, but that also restore all the underlying systems, the seagrasses and the marshes. Healthy seagrass beds, a resilient seagrass bed, uh, is indicative of a healthy coastal system. And a healthy coastal system means good, uh, healthy populations of fish. And it's also good for the economy. Recreational fishing, commercial fishing. Seagrass is a little bit different from oyster reefs from the standpoint that large-scale restorations are extremely hard to do. So our strategy there is to make sure that we protect what's there. And in some cases, this is as simple as educating people who are out in the Gulf of Mexico fishing, not understanding that when they drive their boats over the seagrass, they're creating scars in that grass that take years and years and years to heal. So respecting nature, full stop, is fundamental. And what can we do? Protect nature. We have the power to do that. So in 30 years, our kids, our grandkids, all generations to follow will salute us and say, thank you for not just having the facts and figures, but to really be wise. It's a marvelous place, um, a marvelous area, but it is under increasing threats uh, as our population grows and we move actually closer and closer to the coast.
the Gulf is a place that is important, not just because it helps with our economy and not just because um, it helps with our energy industry. The Gulf is important because it's part of our cultural heritage in Texas. It's part of who we are. If we are able to restore at a large scale some of these filtration systems, why Louisiana and Alabama and Mississippi are cleaning up from the oil spill, it puts us in a position to really start rebuilding the Gulf of Mexico from the Texas coast over. The world is in trouble. The ocean is in trouble. That means our future is in jeopardy. It isn't just about taking care of the fish and the shrimp and the dolphins and the whales. It's about taking care of us. There is a connection like that. If you harm the ocean, you harm us. So we have the power. Nature Conservancy shines in this area in terms of taking care of the natural systems that take care of us.